In today's video, we're gonna show you several different ways to get power to your home in the event of an emergency power outage. We're gonna show you how to get whole home power and how easy that is. Then we're gonna show you how easy it can be to get power to isolated items like your fridge, your gas furnace, things that are critical to keeping your home warm and your food cold. So with that, let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is the power station that we're going to demonstrate how to get this power to these items in your home. And I just briefly wanna cover some of the info on this Jackery Home Power 3600 Plus. This is the smallest, lightest 3600 watt power station on the market currently. And this guy is normally priced about 2600. And this unit is going to be marked down a ton for the big deal prime days. So make sure and check it out. I'll leave it in the video description as well as a link right up here if you're watching on TV. Now right up here in the front, you'll probably notice this first of all, this is perfect for powering your RV. So we're gonna plug this into our RV, show you how it functions everything, including our AC, which is a heat pump. So make sure and stay tuned for that. So that's a really versatile thing if you wanna bring this with you while you're going camping. Then we have an additional four 110 outlets that are also 3,600 watts. We have two USB-Cs here and two USB-As. And then we have the same nice display here having our input and our output. And there is also a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capable app that you can use with this that is very easy to use and you have a few more parameters that you can adjust. On the right side here, we have our AC input where we can charge this off of a regular 110 outlet. With this charge port, we can charge up to 1800 watts, meaning we can charge this really fast off of a normal 110 volt outlet. We have our DC inputs. We can input up to a thousand watts of uh, solar input. And then we have our expansion ports there as well. This guy comes in at 77 pounds, but even so it's very easy to lift with these ergonomic handles. And then we also have this pop-up um, suitcase design to where we can roll this around and then it's easily stowed. We've put this through some tests and the wheels really do work. They're solid, so there's nothing to get damaged here. And we've rolled it through gravel, over grass, over sidewalks, things of that nature. And this thing is very durable. Okay, so the first way we're gonna demonstrate how to get this power to our whole home on a very cost-effective way is by means of these two items. So this is called a power inlet box, and we'll demonstrate how this works after we show you what it is. So basically we have a, some male prongs here that will never ever be live. This is only allowing power to go in, so thus the name power inlet box. And so we have the proper gauge wire going up into our main breaker panel. And here we can see we have this labeled as the generator. That's gonna be this top right one. And this device right here is called a interlock kit. And basically its sole purpose is to never allow this power to go into the home from the generator. So this wiring is just going from this box through the panel to this breaker. It will never allow power to go through here while this is currently on. So in order to turn our generator on, or in essence, allow power to go into this breaker panel, powering items in our home, we have to first turn this off, slide this up, and then we can turn this on. And then the same is true in, in reverse order. We can't turn this main power back on from the grid until we turn this power off. Okay, so first of all, boom, power is out. Uh, there was a storm or some sort of outage there is no power coming from here, so we have to manually come, turn this off, slide this up, and then we can turn on this breaker. Now we are unable to turn on our grid power, and in essence, this is not going to ever allow this energy to go through here, through the meter, and potentially hurt someone or what's called back feeding. That's what this prevents from happening. So now that we have this set up, we wanna turn off breakers that we don't want to supply with power. So we're gonna turn off our hot tub breaker. We're going to turn off our solar panel. So this 60 amp, we don't want that being powered. This is a totally different system. I'm acting as if you did not have solar and you just wanna power your whole home with this device. So we have our solar off. Um, stuff like our dryer and our oven, we probably wouldn't wanna use with this. We just wanna keep the, the home warm, keep our fridge on, uh, things that are really critical for keeping power on. So we'll go ahead and close this. Now all we need is a cable to run from there to there. 
Now there's definitely different cables depending on what your generator has and what power inlet box you have or what power inlet box you want to put in. Mine has four prongs like this. This is a 30 amp. And then the other side is the same as this, but male. And because we don't have a male inlet with four prongs for 30 amps, we just had to use some adapters here. But you can actually purchase this cable with the four prong female on one side and the three prong male on this side. I just don't happen to have it on hand. So once again, this breaker is on, but there will never be power here. So it's just receiving power, that's all. So what we're gonna do is take this four prong plug, twist it so it's completely plugged in. And I definitely prefer this power inlet box because the other ones are kind of similar to this and they, might allow water to go in through the side, but I like how this is all completely sealed. That's why I installed this one in particular. So next we'll take the other end and plug it right into our power station. And now once we turn this on, that all will have energy, but it's obviously isolated because something is plugged into it. So we're gonna click the AC button. And this is everything that was currently running in my house that's gonna come back on. So right now we're pulling 12, 13. We'll see where this stops at. So we're at 1400 watts. So right now this is saying this will run for two and a half, roughly two and a half hours. This is dependent on what items are currently running. So in an emergency situation, obviously you wanna go inside and turn things off that are not critical and lower this amount to where the hours of runtime is going to be higher. So let's go inside and see what we're currently powering. Okay, so currently, obviously our fridge is gonna be running. Everything's functioning there. So funny enough, I'm actually charging this power station right here. It's pulling 500 watts. So that would be the reason why this thing is pulling more watts. And I believe, yeah, our pool pump is also running. That's probably pulling quite a bit of amperage here. So I'm gonna come over here and turn this guy off. Okay, so now that I have the pool pump turned off and the other power station is no longer charging, we're up to 7.7 .7 hours. So currently our fridge is running and uh, our lights, just normal stuff. So this would power for 7.7 .7 hours. We could even take this a step further and just go through and turn off any unnecessary items and see how high we can get this number. So let's go ahead and do that and see how high we can get it. So I forgot, but we also have this um, beer fridge that's also being powered by the power station right now. So we have basically two fridges that are running. Oh, I totally forgot about this freezer that we also have full of meat and other stuff. So we're actually powering three fridges and it said we would run this for 7.7 .7 hours. Okay, so we're showing 13.3 hours with the garage lights and that fridge turned off. So this is powering two fridges and it says we can run for 13 hours, 214 watts, which is pretty impressive when you think about two, um, two fridges being powered off of this power station. All right, so this gives us a good idea of how long this will run certain devices in our home. But let's say you don't have a power inlet box, you don't have the ability to install this um, it can be kind of scary when you think about all of the wires and breakers and all of this, and you don't want to fool with it. I want to show you how you can just get power from this to your gas furnace. Because as we said before, when you go down to your gas furnace, you'll more than likely see something like this, and it's just a light switch. You can't plug anything into it to power it. And so we're going to show you how to get this power just to your gas furnace and power that item all by itself. Okay, so we're back down here at our gas furnace. Now, while we were showing you the sequence of operation and that this was working, you may have noticed this green box right here. Now, this is called an easy generator switch. And the whole idea here is that you're allowing power to get to this furnace independently from everything else. So you don't have to have a power inlet box or solar panels or anything. You can just plug an extension cord in from this to our power station and it will completely power our furnace independently. Now I have a full install video of this. It took about 30 minutes to install it. These are about 88 bucks on Amazon, so a very cheap price point. 
In fact, during the prime days, I think these are going to be even cheaper. So I'll make sure and leave a link in the video description as well as a QR code right here. So let's just demonstrate um, this furnace was working a few minutes ago. So all we do is take this three-way switch, we put it into the off position, and then we're going to plug in our extension cord. So same thing here, except we're just gonna be using the normal 110 outlet here. And then we take the female end and we plug it in right here. Now it's as simple as pushing this over to generator power. And once again, if you unplug this, those prongs are never gonna be live. This is just allowing power to go in here just like our power inlet box. So this is basically just a smaller power inlet box. This is UL listed, so it's completely legal. It has a 15 amp fuse breaker there, and of course our three-way switch. So let's go ahead and bump this AC on. And now this furnace is getting power. So let's go into our Ecobee app, signal this to turn on, and we'll actively show you how many amps it's pulling. Okay, so we just signaled our Ecobee thermostat in the heating position. So this should come on. Uh, it probably takes a second to boot up. Because we had turned power off, the Ecobee has to reboot, and that takes about 30 seconds or so. All right, so our inducer just came on. We're pulling 79 watts, and next our hot surface igniter will come on, and we'll see how many watts that pulls all by itself, of course, with the inducer fan. Looks like 170 it spiked up to, and then it's going down slowly. And of course, once the flames come on, this doesn't really change at all. Um, once the blower motor comes on, obviously this is gonna go up. So let's go ahead and put our cover back on. And I just wanted to show you how that worked. Okay, so blower motor is coming on right now. So it looks like we've stabilized at 135 watts total, which will give us 19.2 hours. And again, this will cycle on and off, on and off as we reach our set point. And this will be much higher than 19 hours for sure. Now, a question that I get asked all the time is, how does my smart thermostat get power in the event of a power outage? And the answer is quite simple. Anytime you have power going into this, whether it's grid power or battery power like we have now, as long as this control board in the furnace has power, your thermostat is going to function as it normally would. So even when we're running on backup power, our thermostat will come online and it will function just as if we had been running it on grid power. So next I wanna show you how we can easily power our RV if we're boondocking or something of that nature. So we're simply gonna plug this in. Our AC power is already on. And right now I believe our fridge will come on. So. 70, 80 watts, something like that. This says right now it'll power this for 30 hours. So this would be an awesome addition to just keep in the camper and just keep it charged up. And another awesome thing about this is you can use the Jackery Solar Saga 500 that has these um, diagonal panels that all clip together and it's kind of like an accordion. So if we're boondocking, we can just plug this in or if we're using this in an emergency power outage, we can slowly get energy back to this as we're using it and restore power and be able to use that power. Okay, so right now I believe our fridge is on. Yeah, you can hear it running. So this really doesn't pull that many watts um, running the fridge. I'm curious if we wanted to run the microwave. Check that out. Let's see how many watts that's pulling. 1500 watts that sucker pulls a lot but if you're only running it for you know a couple minutes to warm up some food that's an awesome thing that you can be able to do now let's try out our ac let's bump this back off so this ac that we have installed here is not your average ac this is the Turbo, Turbo Greenland, and it's an inverter compressor, so it uses a lot less um, amps than a traditional AC, and it has a slow start, so check this out. We're gonna bump this on, we're in cooling. We're just gonna crank this down to 64, and as you can see, we're in cooling mode, and once the compressor slowly kicks on, we'll show you what, 
what it's reading on the Jackery power station. All right, guys, the AC is on right now and we're pulling 613 watts. This will fluctuate a little bit. It's gone up to about 630 and come back down. And it says we can run this for four and a half or 4.9 hours rather, which is pretty impressive considering the size of this power station. Super nice cold air coming out. And like we said, we can hear a little buzz up here on our compressor, but it's not loud at all. Super awesome. So if I go over here to our water heater, turn that guy on. I think right now it's set for gas, but we're gonna toggle it over to electric. Yeah, so it's gonna try and start but I'm gonna to toggle this little switch down here to electric. And then let's see how many watts it's pulling. Okay, so that guy pulls some power. So if at all possible, I recommend using gas to run your water heater, but this will power the water heater if need be. You could definitely heat it up to get probably a few showers out of it. And then you can recharge it with the solar panels, but you're definitely more efficient using gas to heat up your water. Well guys, I hope you learned a thing or two on how to get power to your gas furnace, your fridge, your whole home, or your RV. This is such a versatile product by Jackery, and I hope if you're looking for a power station that this is in your list of ones to look at to potentially purchase. Now, as we said before, this one is marked down from 25 or 2600 down to 1600, so make sure and check out the link in the video description or this guy right here if you're interested in purchasing one. Now, if you're interested in seeing how the easy generator switch installs, again, this is $88. It took about 30 minutes to install, and we walk you through this from start to finish. You can find that video right here. And until next time, you guys be safe. Later.